Hey, welcome back to Jazz Time. Jazztime.com is an online store that buys, sells, and trades authentic luxury watches. We make these videos so you can easily choose the best watch for yourself in the comfort of your own home. We offer the lowest prices anywhere online, and if you'd like to know the price, simply click on the links in the description below. We greatly appreciate if you purchase your next watch from us at jazztime.com. Today we'll be taking a look at a currently discontinued watch from Tag Heuer. This one, the Tag Heuer Carrera, the automatic chronograph, the 43 millimeter case size, Reference number CV2A1R.BA0799, the last portion there referring to, of course, the bracelet. A fully steel watch, again, 43 millimeters, ceramic bezel chronograph with tons of numbers and a lot of functionality in here. So I'll be going over all the aspects of this watch, the case, the bezel dial, crown functions, as well as the movement and I'll be giving you my thoughts on these throughout this video. So starting off with the case, 43 millimeters from finger to thumb, that's the two to eight o'clock position, also from the 10 to four o'clock position, basically from the chronograph pushers all the way across, not including the pushers themselves, 43 millimeters. So quite a big and wide stance on the wrist. As I showed you earlier when I you know, threw it on my wrist, it's pretty big on me. My wrist being seven inches in circumference, this will be definitely for someone whose wrist is no smaller than seven inches in circumference. If your wrist happens to be smaller than that, and you're going for absolute wrist presence in terms of size, you've got it here with the 43 millimeter case size. You have a full steel construction here again, high polish along the sides here with very interesting all high polish on these bevels as well. And with the bracelet being integrated, only the satin brush finish portions there. You have, again, all stainless steel construction, even for the buttons themselves, and even for the case back, minus the open portion there, the exhibition part, which shows the movement on the inside of the caliber 16. Now taking a look here at the very front of the case here, we have the tachymetric bezel, the tachymeter, or tachymeter, whatever you want to call it, it's all made in ceramic, so it's scratch resistant, just like the sapphire crystal on the front, which is domed, as you can see on the by the way that it plays in the light. It's not exactly the most, uh, you know, glare resistant, but quite strong because you can still see the dial quite clearly, especially with your eyes. Uh, it doesn't come through on the video quite as well but you know, that's just how it is. The surface of the dial itself, sort of like a matte finish there in all in black with uh, applied uh, index markers. Well, applied hours in terms of the seconds and minutes. So you actually have full number setups here, really evoking the sense of a speedometer or you know uh, a dial that you would find in a car or even uh, an airplane like an Air King or something like that from Rolex, you'd have that sort of uh, very, very busy dial layout here. But this is basically one uh, where you basically get everything, almost everything that a uh, modern wristwatch can offer. The subdials themselves for the chronograph here, 30 minutes at the 12, 12 hours at the six, uh, sort of encircled in a silver guilloshade pattern uh, also with concentric circles going from the inside out on those subdials as well really brings to the forefront uh, you know in terms of the visual hierarchy so you, you see the hands and the date and the day first but then right after that you also see the forms of these chronograph subdials making that really the main focus of this watch and that's basically what you get the a uh, center mounted chronograph hand can be run like a large seconds hand should you so desire, but you do have the small seconds at the nine o'clock, incredibly small and not very high on the visual hierarchy scale because you know, honestly, seconds don't really matter all that much. What matters is how you control and view the seconds yourself. This being a chronograph watch uh, with, you know, the main focus being on racing, that's basically Tag Heuer's, uh, you know, concentration, their basic uh, branding, uh, so you do get that with the red tipped chronograph hand, sort of a very, very long lance style hand. Turning off the lights here, when it comes to the hands, well, that's basically all that's luminescent. You have the uh, sort of tips for the hour and minute hands illuminated with the rest of the bodies there with a tiny little stripe being taken out. Not sure exactly why they would do that, but that's just what it is. Maybe a distinctly uh, Carrera look here. Let me move the minute hand out of the way here so I can actually show you the functionality for this watch. So, 
as you can probably guess, all the functionality for this watch comes in the form of the winding crown minus the chronograph pushers, obviously. Pressing the top pusher will start and stop that chronograph hand, and pressing the bottom pusher when it is stopped will reset the subdials as well as that chronograph hand, obviously. Basically, at the base position for the winding crown, at the 3 o'clock position, you can wind the watch. So, basically, you can just slide this off your wrist and just wind it if you ever actually need to. Not too important there, other than that. Pull out to the next position. This is how you adjust the day and date functionality. Rotating it clockwise advances the day forward. And interestingly enough, you can actually advance it all the way around. Let me do this. Interestingly enough, you can actually rotate it counterclockwise, well, intuitively, to adjust the day, but it actually goes backwards, as you can see, because this is not the typical sequence for the week, Monday, Sunday, Saturday, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. However, this is actually quite useful, because if you set the, if you're not sure exactly where you are in a 24-hour cycle, because this is a 12-hour dial, well, you can simply just set it to the day before quite easily rather than having to go all the way around and cycling around to the next week and then simply pull the crown all the way out. This stops the seconds hand as well as that chronograph hand giving you the hacking function and then just simply press or rather push that minute hand all the way around until it passes midnight. And at that point, that's when the usefulness of setting the day backwards actually comes in handy because then that way you have the utmost accuracy when setting the time and the day and the date rather simple there all right and once you've got it nicely synchronized up to an atomic clock you have the minute hand uh, presented in the correct spot with uh, that of the small seconds hand you can simply press the crown back in start it, want to start it back up and same with the chronograph hand as well. All right, so what makes all of this work on the inside? Caliber 16, the automatic movement, as you can see, the jar, that big winding rotor center mounted. It's an automatic chronograph, gives you 42 hours of power reserve with the center mounted minutes, hours, and large chronograph hand with the small seconds offset, the small subdials for the 12 and 6 o'clock positions, day and date functionality, something you don't see typically in chronographs and especially a chronograph of this stature something that has so much going on on it and I can probably give you some reasons why a little bit later but first also the power reserve for this one 42 hours so you can basically set it down on a Friday evening you can pick it back up maybe Sunday evening and then just give it a couple wines wear it all day Monday and you'll, you'll be back to the full power reserve rather simple there looking here at the bracelet while we're, while we're zoomed out they're sort of like these h-shaped links with a uh, intermediate link attached as well so sort of alternating high polish and satin finish when it comes to the intermediate portions of the links themselves on the outer edges all satin brush finish with high polish on the sides you also have a double button uh, double push button deployment clasp here rather actually sturdy really with the tag Heuer logo there pressing both sides to open it up. You can't actually open it by just simply pulling it or pressing one side. You must press both sides to deploy it. As you can see, it has sort of like a hook function in there, so it must actually have both uh, in order to deploy. You have the full word mark portion of their logo on the sort of folding portion here and a full steel construction as well. All right, and also, again, once again, on my wrist here, again, 43 millimeters, pretty big nothing to scoff at certainly and with the 16 over 16 millimeter uh, case thickness here won't slide very easily under a suit cuff so you do get more of the sporty nature less a little bit less formal a mo little bit more casual and with the bracelet here it will actually keep it on your wrist quite nicely a bit heavy a little top heavy for me if your wrist is a little bit bigger and you have the full bracelet here nicely gripping your wrist well you won't have any issues it won't go anywhere and it actually won't feel that heavy at all but for someone like me um, having this kind of watch 43 millimeter case size 16 over 16 millimeter i believe 16 and a half millimeter thickness 
all steel casing, it's gonna wobble around quite a bit, but that's basically what you get with something that has such a big wrist presence in terms of the size. And the busyness factor of the style really gives it that uh, sense of racing uh, with the speedometer look, odometer look, and uh, also the functionality of the day and the date there, something you don't see typically in chronographs, something that I think Tag Heuer has, have really put in there to sort of make this a sort of like a good introductory watch into the world of watches because it gives you uh, additional functionality that basically I've never seen in any other chronograph, at least from you know the makers like Rolex, uh, Vacheron, Constantin, Patek Philippe, or even Audemars Piguet. They don't include the day and the date in their chronographs. And here, looking at it down the wrist here, once more, very, very sharp edges, uh, but the lugs don't curve down all that much. They hug the wrist if your wrist is bigger, but they won't dig in, so it feels very good. Also, the bracelet, basically zero tolerance among the links. The pin sleeve and, the pin and sleeve system, not, uh, not theoretically uh, very sound compared to, say, the screw system, but here it's actually incredibly... Uh, incredibly secure. I've never seen any of these slip out. There's uh, basically zero tolerance among these, so you're going to have a tough time accidentally, you know, breaking this bracelet off. It's incredibly sturdy. So basically, that's all I got to say about this watch. What do you think? Let us know down in the comments below. Do you think this is a very good introductory watch? Because I kind of think so too, at a very good price point as well. It's pretty accessible, although accessible in the sense that you can get it from us at Jazz Time because we do have this one for sale. Uh, the retail value above 4000 well, we're going to sell it for a little bit less than that. Just click the links in the description below where you can see it for the, pos the best possible price anywhere online. Be sure to leave a like. Be sure to let us know what you think about this watch. Is it too much? Is it not enough? Is it just right? Let us know. Also, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification so you can be notified when we go live with another video like this one. And as always, if you'd like to purchase this watch, new, used, well, basically it has to be used because it's discontinued, but you can get it from us at jazztime.com. Links in the description below where you can get it for the lowest possible price anywhere online. Thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you in the next one. If you want to find out more about the watch you just saw in the video, you can just click below on show more to see the full description. Then you can check the link next to model as seen in video, click on it and you will get to the proper page where you can see all the details. If you're watching on a mobile phone, you have to click on the arrow down on the right hand side below the video to see the full description. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to share this video with your friends, you can use the share button below and share it on any platform you like. If you have questions, constructive feedback, want to tell us about some mistakes or misspeaks, just write a comment below. If you want to see more videos like this, you should subscribe to our channel and visit our channel page where you can find all the videos. And if you're interested in a specific watch brand, you can check out our playlists. If you want to check the price for a watch or want to buy one, remember at jazztime.com you always get a steep discount, so you should check the prices with us. If you want to know the price for a specific watch, just go to Google, type in jazztime, plus the brand, model and the details you're interested in and Google will find the right page for you. Thank you for watching.